Hello there, this is Big Benedict. We're playing Ghost Recon Future Soldier on a, on Hardcore Difficulty. I almost said Elite Difficulty. And Hardcore Difficulty, as I've been mentioning, is the PC exclusive difficulty, which does not let you walk in Ghost Stealth Mode. It lets you use the Stealth Mode that is called Ghost Mode, but only when you're standing still. Or, you know, lay laying on the ground, but not, not moving in, in completely immobile but still prostrate and this is entitled gallant thief appropriately enough because it is a um, a jailbreak essentially it says prison camp and that's what we need to infiltrate over there it is mission 10 so we only have two chapters left this is a long chapter because some of the, the stealth sections I took my time on them and the next chapter will be a long one and then the final chapter I expect to be the most difficult, but I don't foresee that I won't be able to beat it. I foresee some troubles, but I've always gotten through the troubles, except in one situation, namely Vanquish. But we don't speak of that on this channel. So I'm, I'm very disappointed with the views that I'm receiving and with this guide and also the engagement level of people and you know don't don't feel guilty guilty if you haven't been engaging with the guide I understand there's new games out I understand there's less than less than zero need for this guide at this point but if somebody is playing this on hardcore difficulty this is the best guide on the internet for you and I say that with no hesitation because I put the I put my heart and soul in these guides <laughs> Sorry, I'm a little congested. I put my absolute best in these guides, you guys. And what is yielded but diminished returns? So, if you go into YouTube expecting to get what you think you're owed, you're not going to have a very good impression of YouTube because the payday, if you get a payday, which isn't easy to start getting, but it's paltry and not in proportion to what you actually deserve based on your efforts. But I'm not going to be depressed the entire time, but I will be indictful of certain things along the course of this commentary. I don't, I don't know exactly where it will lead. Usually when I sit down I have a general idea of what I'm going to talk about, but I, I usually talk about what's on the screen. Not because it's what's easiest to speak about, but because it's the most... I mean, I'm doing a guide for a game like this, and people need to know my motivations, why I'm doing things, and you know what's happening on the screen is of paramount importance, so I need to talk about it. But some of the, the minor sequences that are that I deem won't give you much of a problem. I gloss over those sometimes. Clipping. You see that fucking clipping? Exactly like that. I need. I might have to sneeze. The epic Scorpion, Scorpius God of War 3 Chaos Difficulty Guide sneeze that I did. Y'all remember that one if you've been here a while. <laughs> but anyway, we're, we're just doing some infiltration. No detection is allowed. Obviously, you cannot do any synchronized kills with only one man. However, you can mark up to four targets still, and what does that serve? It serves to keep track and tabs on who is where. It's very helpful for that. You can still use the drone for the same purpose, although you can't do kills via it. So you need to take him out and then choke this guy out. Um, certain of these situations as well, you don't have to kill anybody. But I, I'm still at that borderline level of, of stealth games in my experience with them and what I want them to be. So that guy to the left, I'll just ignore him, I believe. So, anyway, so we'll infil infiltrate up ahead. And if this is the part that I think it is, I have some really harsh things to think to say about this coming up. Oh no, this is the drone part. The drone part, n not a problem. There's nothing wrong with it. It's the next part that forced me to watch my own guide to see what I was doing wrong. 
And when that failed, I said, I'm not going to look at... This has to be solved logically. So I looked nowhere else. And I finally figured out what was the problem. And it was a stupid problem. And it was a problem that I, um, I actually scrubbed through all my footage to see what I was doing. And then I finally pinpointed it. And it was very obvious. But this bullshit right here. Do you see this? This is where it starts. If you know... In mo you'll... Mo no... <laughs> Let me stop stuttering for a goddamn minute. Okay, so you can take him out. See that? See, watch what happens over here. Run up to him, and it'll it'll it, it, it'll either choke him or slit his throat. I like when it slits his throat. But if you don't go to this door and get this conversation, then you won't be able to to use the guy's um, retinas to scan um, to be used to scan the door. And then it will, it will seem like your game's broken. So the first time I did this, I I didn't really you know know the exact way to go. So I interacted with the door, got the conversation from headquarters. But then every subsequent time, I didn't do that because I, I knew exactly where I needed to go, which is where the marker is indicating us to go now. And I utterly hate that in games to be so pedantic with with how the formality is supposed to work so if if you I, I stumbled across this on my other guy too and I thought that you know maybe I had to kill I th I thought I had to kill everybody over here more clipping no no more clipping so you see the problem I'll show you the problem if you didn't interact with that door then this conversation right here doesn't ever trigger and you're left to 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 just be baffled so completely unacceptable it should have the dialogue regardless of if you've had the first conversation so I cut the cutscene out what he does is he just drags or he you know he drags the body down he doesn't kill him he just subdues him and then without a checkpoint still you have to take care of these guys I don't, yeah, it says no alert. So if you alert, you could possibly get into a fail state and have to start all over based on these two guys here. Transmitting now. Copy, we're reading it. And now you're allowed to make noise. However, I make no noise and I take everybody out. So there's the save, the checkpoint, excuse me. But oh, okay. This is actually quite fun, and you get a checkpoint on on one of these as well. So you don't have to do all of this perfectly as far as getting the stealth kills. But on a difficulty mode like this, it's at such a high end that you want to be doing the stealth because the battles are are the the enemies are so destructive, and your health is so marginal. I think you only get three hits. You know, three hits, you're you're out of the game. See you later. So, to abrogate that, don't even sound the alerts. It sounds difficult, but these paths, you can get really familiar with the enemy's paths, and you have so many tools at your disposal. You've got the the thermal vision. You've got sensors. You can even use the drone. You know, you could snap from cover to cover so seamlessly. This game is an unmitigated masterpiece, hands down. Whatever you, you might think about this game, I'm telling you right now that if you've heard, you know, bad things about it, oh, look at that fucking clipping. Uh, that, you know, with some, I'm not saying it's perfect. You know, masterpieces are perfect because they're often flawed and it's an irony you have to de deal with it but th that shit is just unacceptable so if I were you I would tag enemies it, they last longer than the sensors they last as long as you have them tagged you could keep track of them so 
this is the path I'm taking. I'm just going to be threading my way through here and just taking people out one by one. And I could talk about some tangents, although I, I don't really know how I want to start these tangents up. So anyway, I'm very disillusioned about video games at this point in my life. I'm getting... The emptiness that's inside of me is because there's no good games to play. And it's like that with a lot of things in my life. If I'm not given what I want and what I've been accustomed to receiving, I get depressed and I get mad. So take, for example, I won't even talk about video games. I'll just talk about the back pill, my back pills that I, I've been mentioning a couple of other times. You know, in this, in this state, unfortunately, the rules are so strict that... Um, uh, like physicians, family in general, practitioners, they don't do pain management, so you're sent to pain management. And, you know, you're, you're guilty the minute you walk in in there. And, of course, they wouldn't say that, but you're just because I'm a good person, I'm not saying I'm a saint, but because other people don't follow the rules, I get judged and have to follow stringent rules because of the way they break the rules. So, you know, when I when I run out of my pills, I don't get any sympathy. I can get more, but I have to wait. And the thing is, that bothers me because in the old days it wasn't like that. And, and with games, you know, and I'm not a pill popper. I take enough pills. You know, it, if if my pain level is at a certain point, like when it reaches a cres crescendo, like a, a a point where I can no longer tolerate it in my life is not comfortable you know and the quality of my life suffers because of it I'm going to take something to help myself and with these video games here I I kind of came into the the picture late with video games like I wasn't there when God of War the first one came out I was in school same with God of War 2 and even with number three so I had a huge back catalog to siphon through and and now I want more and more and more of the same stuff and unfortunately the mentality of the gaming scene and the gamers has has changed you know more people want multiplayer the games of yore are, are vanishing and they're not being made as much so I've said what I want and I, what what else can I say? I, I, I'll, I'll, I, I want my fucking games. You know, I don't care how many iterations of a game there is. I mean, as long as they're good. But anyway, bringing this back to where I tried to start it at. You know, along with depression, it comes an emptiness inside of you. And, you know, I'm trying to fill the void and I realize that it's either one of two things. I've got to stop playing games for a while and then, you know, do some other intellectual activities. I know playing games isn't exactly intellectual but it is stimulating for the brain you know do something else stimulating like reading or you know going out in real life and solving other people's problems or you know solving my own problems which are more pressing so putting space between games is 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 good for me even if it's you know just a few hours you stop playing you'll get the itch to start playing again but I want what I want I'm not satisfied with the plethora of, of dog shit that were served up as though it were the finest cuisine ever as far as what a game should be if you follow along with that metaphor and I know I'm pretty harsh with what I say calling games shit and calling games that aren't in third person inferior and not games and calling indie games 
not games either. But those are my feelings, and I express myself the way I want to on my channel. I try not to say anything, you know, that would offend anybody on a personal level. I'm just stating my, my feelings and giving my opinions on what I want from games. And if that offends you personally, um, you've got some problems probably dealing with society. I, I don't know. And another part of me just f feels, it, it just feels like, um, I think the worst feeling you can feel is that your life has no meaning. And that can often be reinforced when you see these diminished returns on YouTube. You know, nobody's watching my shit, obviously. I'm a failure. But I'm not really a failure, it just feels like that. But it can be its own kind of curse where it just reinforces itself. And this guide has made me, you know, question the path that I've taken over the last couple of years starting this YouTube project and, and, and making guides. So, we've got a long way to go, you guys, still. There's going to be another long stealth section. I want to talk about this one, though. So, we're going to come on down here now. Go through the elevator. I'm going to speed this footage up here. So, if you want some advice about YouTube, you do not get what you received, or excuse me, you don't receive what you should are entitled to receive, you know, in the grand scheme of things, if there were divine justice. Uh, first of all, take this guy out. There's going to be a guy on a catwalk above, and then there's also going to be a guy in the distance walking towards us, and then the guy right in front of us within the diamond, the yellow diamond, and the rifleman, who's stationary. So what I like to do here is shoot the guy on the catwalk, but this is very delicate. This is one of those parts of the game where it's a little irritating because the mechanics aren't 100% perfect the way they need to be. They're 99%, and I keep getting that, that 1% too many times where this guy gets alerted down here. See, he was alerted, so I had to shoot him in the back, but fortunately they give you an out, sort of, by allowing you to take down the person who would ordinarily have rang the alarm. So, this is our next target up here. I had no issues about other people discovering other people's bodies. I only had issues with people seeing me, so we're going to take this guy out, back off, even drop to the floor if necessary, because that helps too. The next target. I believe he's over to the right. So you want to backtrack now. You never want to kill enemies distanced too far from you because you never know who's lurking around next to them around a corner and you go, you'll fail. So this is the way I move in Recon Future Soldier. From, from one piece of the of the ground to the next on the grid if you imagine this this game it's all on a grid every time you you move the analog stick up when you're when you're aiming it's all on a grid and it, it it's 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 a marvel of ingenuity and precision so take this shitter out So, so uh, what you need, need to do here, I let this be a gunfight in my other guide. On this guide, I killed everybody except two people, but that wasn't 
that wasn't still that wasn't a failing on my part because all I needed to do was to go to the prison cell where they're holding the Russian president and I knew where it was since I I remembered from last time excuse me so do not expect anything from YouTube try your hand at it and realize that people they they're not going to come to your videos in the numbers you want them to they still will come for instance with this guy yes people still are watching even if some of the videos at this point have 43 views what does that prove that proves first of all that that people are watching but it proves that you know obviously 43 was not what i wanted i wanted five times as much you know for a channel of my size that's about a realistic expectation or maybe three times as much if you if you want to be uh, anyway take this guy out before he goes up the stairs see number one what I did was I marked number one so that I could see where he was uh, positioned and you know what way he was facing You know, don't put all your hopes and dreams into YouTube, though. And not just here's what here's what I do. I do what I enjoy. I don't expect anything but the bare minimum, and I put all of my heart and soul into my projects, and I do the best quality that I possibly can, and then some. And if people want to come, they will come. That's why I'm not going to be putting my my Twitter handle in the bottom left of the screen like I did in the last video because there is a description box on each of these videos that that gives you all of my social links there's also there's also social links on my channel page that people can click on people have free will they're gonna do what they're, they want to do and if it's just madness if you try to you know will people to do what you want Because you're never going to get what you want so you've got to take it easy on YouTube lower your expectations raise the quality so the advice that I want to give this guy whose guide I mentioned a couple of times sea dragon 88 you've got to put commentary on your guides dude and you have to take out the death screens those are a couple criticisms that I'm not offending you if you're watching this that's great if you're not you'll never hear it but maybe somebody else is doing similar things we'll, we'll do that you need a commentary you need a you need a charisma you know and you need a, a voice on your guides because otherwise it's if you're just showcasing skill how can I empathize with you how, how do I relate with you the only way is to have a voice on on the video and no death screens that's the most annoying thing that I could think you know because on a walkthrough you need to see successes on a playthrough where it's casual those are fine to have in so couple of targets left you guys and that, that's the end of the tangents I'm sorry if it was kind of um, depressing but I just wanted to mention that because I often just you know I do these videos I see no returns um, you know diminished returns and I'm, I'm just looking out to the left outside my window at life going on you know my friends being happy relatives and things like that having families and here I'm making videos which other people would think you know is an exercise in futility and something juvenile and a waste of time obviously I don't think those things but I know other people probably do and that's why I don't take this as a joke yes here and there I'll toss in an occasional joke 
but I take what I do very seriously. And that's why I discuss the game when I need to at all times. You know, other times there's tangents because you just can't have tangents and you just can't have total talking about the gameplay. So these guys, these guys, these guys are hard to take out. So what I, what I thought to do was, I will circle around them and come back to kill them, and it is possible. But you're gonna. This is a really close call. What you need to do is take a left, because the only way you're gonna kill those two guys is to kill one and then kill the other one very, very rapidly, and. I wouldn't even recommend that because there is another guy down the hall to the left behind a cage who will probably hear the, the bodies falling. If not see them, definitely hear something and you'll be completely screwed. But this could be a huge gun brawl if you want to, but surviving it on this difficulty, I can't speak for it since all I did was stealth, but I imagine it's excruciating. So take this motherfucking son of a bitch out, and I think there's a guy doing jumping jacks in here somewhere, or you know, that jumping action to keep warm. So we're going to stop him from doing that and turn him cold. Or, or is this a smoker? I don't know. But we're nearing the room where the president is. So at this point, I said to myself, I, I still need to kill these two guys because they're outstanding. And then I got the little alert icon telling me there's somebody over there, so I need to drop to the floor. And there's the guy right over there. So with, with this entire hallway cleared, I mean, we've, we've killed dozens of enemies so far. Well, I wouldn't say dozens, at least a dozen. So... We're going to go over here, and you still do not get a checkpoint. But as long as you know that you need to go down here, no one will come for you because those two guys marked one and two are stationary, and that black guy who thought he saw us a moment ago, he was not going to come out of that room ever. So don't worry about your vulnerability while you're doing this. Just do the sonic pulse to unlock the door go in here and save him and then we'll finally get a checkpoint anyway so once you pick up Viodin you're going to need to transport him outside so we're essentially going back the way we came shoot this guy here what did I shoot him with I'm not sure I think I, I think that was just a standard blast from a from the assault rifle to be honest and this guy over here didn't hear him but do you see where it says 73 meters a moment ago? 70, it says like, it's in the 60s now, mid 60s. You don't have very far to travel with him. He doesn't have a health integrity, so he doesn't need to be protected, but you need to be stealthy here. So, this, um, this environment should be familiar to you because you've, if you if you were a fool like me the first time I played this, and how, and how could I not have been ignorant because I I didn't know which room the I didn't know which room he was in, it should have it should have at least been clear to me to pick the last room since they want to give you the most hardship in this game seemingly, but when I first played this difficulty I thought maybe to myself, well I, I kind of breathed a sigh of relief I should have just taken a right over there I, I could have cleared this faster, unless there's an enemy in my wake. But you know how in those, in like The Last of Us, they take sir, they take the the hearing range, like the listen mode, I think it's called. They take that off. I was surprised they, yeah. So you do need to do this stealthily, and you do need to take this guy out because he's staring right at the garage. We need to go through. But fortunately, they still give you magnetic view. They still give you the thermal view. So just be grateful for what they have still left intact in this game and not worry so much about you know what uh, what fewer resources you have you know your own lowered health integrity 
and then once we go out here the, the easy easy thing about the situation is that all of the the soldiers that were in this at this base are going to be fleeing in tandem with us and then we'll get a checkpoint in a minute and be on the final sequence where it's one of those cliches again over and over by the way if you go to the left where it says to the left 227 meters all it does is, is a scripted sequence where the fire burns down a wall and you can't go that way so I'm just going the way I know that I can go to expedite this process and anybody you have to kill anybody who gives you a hard time just kill them I think there's one instance where I got into a face-to-face -face confrontation with somebody but I, I put him down and um, you know, I will try not to complain so much in my videos. It, um, part of it is complaining, and I, I realize that. Other other times, it's just things I need to get off my chest, and it's easier to to do that, you know, on these commentaries rather than to you know talk to other people about them. So once you get up here you're gonna notice a, uh, a rather extreme jump what they do is they give you uh, see my gun um, they give you you want to pick up that gun because although it had to, although it has short bursts of fire it's very powerful they give you a powerful gun over here however sometimes um, if you're not doing headshots it's not gonna take down these guys <clears throat> that was a poor example of it and the reload time is slow too so just you know, pick what you want. I mean, if you want to use the offered weapon, you can. Staying behind this is the best way. They're only going to come from the left and from the right, and then at the end, all they do is come from the right. So, just a couple of guys use your frag grenades, and it's not too bad, actually. This only took me two tries. Like and the second time was the victory try, and then you know just toss sensors, mark targets so you can see where they are. And I think I got a couple of rushers near the end of this. Almost died, but I they they give you the upper hand in the melee. I love that. I mean, they didn't have to do that, and yet they do, and it's fair, nice and fair. So where is this other guy at? Okay, so there's the friendly chopper. I'm going to throw some nades here, some sensor grenades to, to mark these guys for death. And then when they come up here, you know, I could do the usual routine of shooting them and or meleeing them. So this guy went down like a sack of shit that he is. This guy's throwing nades. I'm going to punch this guy, step on his face. Get to stepping, bitch. <laughs> 